Hi, David, they call me MacGyver. Today I'm going to show you how to patch a hole in a wall, a uh, sheetrock wall. And this particular instance was they had added a room onto the outside of their house, and I didn't know it. Uh, so as I cut a hole in there, I was going to be fishing wires through it, but there was actually a foundation there, and there's only about a uh, maybe an inch at the most space, three quarters of an inch to an inch space between the sheetrock and the concrete footing. And so I had to, after I cut the hole, then I had to patch it back up. So I'm going to show you how you can do that, um, get it nice and solid, and it really doesn't take too long, probably take you maybe 20 minutes or so to do this. So anyway, hang tight and we'll get started. So here you can see the uh, foundation, the old foundation from the um, wall, and you look up there and there's just a little one by up there, so there's about an inch space between the sheetrock and that uh, foundation wall that was there before. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a thin piece of wood because I don't have much space. You run that screw in there so it gives you something to hold on to. And um, I'm going to pull out on the screw so that I can run a screw in through the sheetrock and drill into that piece of wood. So it's up there. Now it's pretty thin wood, but I didn't think I could get much thicker wood to go in the slot and I'm checking to see if it's level and uh, I just don't feel like it's holding as good as I want so I'm going to take this back out so I'm loosening the screw on that I'll pull my my wood back out and I'm going to cut another piece of wood the same dimension as this one and stack them together and then run the screw through both of them and then see if I can get it back in there. It's going to be a little tight, but I just want a little more meat on it. Yeah, it's a little snug there, so I'll just tap it in. There, I got it in. So now I'll use that same hole that I originally started. Hopefully you'll not have a situation where you have a wall that backs up against concrete like that. Normally you've got three and a half inches in, in the middle there and you can use a lot thicker piece of wood like a three quarter inch or something. But in this particular instance I couldn't do that so I've got probably about a quarter inch wood now because I used eighth inch little eighth inch plywood pieces and then I stacked them together so I've got about a quarter inch thick and then that sheetrock screw just goes in there and because I can't run too long of a screw because it'll hit the block wall I had to use like um, I think these are one inch screws and that sheetrock's half inch so it goes at it's going all the way through the wood but there's probably about a quarter inch on the back side there's just not a lot of space between the foundation and the wood that I'm putting back in there but this is a way you can patch up any any hole in sheetrock um, now, I, I already have the piece that I cut out of here to put back in, but you could do the same thing as if you would, uh, just had a piece of sheetrock you're cutting to put back in. So now what we'll do is we'll take the screw out that I used to pull and get that out of there, and then we'll stick the piece back in there that I took out earlier and get that fit back in there. And then I'll run a couple screws through this sheetrock into that wood. And that'll make it good and solid in there so it doesn't move. And I always make sure that the screws are, you know, below the surface of the sheetrock. Otherwise, when you go to use your putty knife, you'll hit the top of a screw. You'll see um, that screw come through the sheetrock. Now what I'm doing is, I like this paper tape. Um... I just use my sheetrock knife to pull up against it and then I just tear it straight down and it makes a nice pretty clean cut there. And initially I was gonna I was going to run um, four pieces two across and then rip two little pieces and stick it in between them but um, you'll see that when I actually put this up there I just use two vertical pieces of tape because this hole is small enough and it'll still cover everything. So right now I'm just checking it 
because that was the first piece I cut, so I are good there. Now I'm gonna put a layer of mud on, sheetrock mud. I'm gonna have a layer underneath the tape. And then um, I actually have a little pan uh, that I drag my tape through just just to get it damp. I just put it in and run it through real quick. I'm going to hang on to it so it doesn't shift on me. And then I just kind of squeeze the water down and out, and it get, makes that tape stick up against the other uh, sheetrock mud under it. And then I'll then I'm putting a layer of mud over the top of the tape. So this is the other piece that I had. So I'm just squaring it off and now I will put mud up there and I'll run that uh, that piece of tape through my little pan of water. I just stick it in there and drag it through. I don't let it soak. Just, just want it damp and that makes it so much easier for it to stick to the, to the sheetrock mud underneath it. Now there, that screw there was a little high when I went over it. I could tell, so I just sunk it down a little bit. Now it's now it's low enough. It filled with mud, so I put the mud underneath, and then that damp tape will stick so much nicer. You won't have to worry about it bubbling off and having air bubbles underneath it. So I just kind of tap it up there, and then I'll I'll take my putty knife and very lightly just push it into that mud underneath, and then I'll get more mud. And then I'll put some more mud over the top of that sheetrock tape and smooth it out and just start smoothing her out. You want to make sure that you get a good coat over the top of all your all your tape because when you when you go to sand, you don't want to sand into the tape because uh, that will show when you paint. So I'm going all the way around it, building it up. Um, most people or a lot of people when they do sheetrock patch they try to do just such a small area that you can't taper it but uh, you know that was a little two by four hole there and we're going quite big because we want to be able to taper that uh, sheetrock mud into the existing wall and now I'm pushing on the edge kind of tapering it up and I'll do the same thing on the other side come across the top here just trying to get kind of a semi smooth surface and then I'll come back and put a little bit more mud on it and finish up on getting it smoothed out and I can still see I'm, I'm getting close to the tape because I can see it through the mud so I'll I'll do a little bit more build up with mud um, so that it's not showing through because I want to have a little sheetrock mud there to be able to sand without getting down to the tape. So once I once I get this all done uh, with the putty knives and, and the sheetrock uh, knife, once I get it all done and it dries, then you want to come back and you want to use um, like a hundred grit paper or something around the edge and blend all that edge into the existing wall and then just lightly sand in the middle just to get any ridges or whatever out and then you can just uh, you know spray a little can texture on there and then uh, you'll want to uh, do adjustment on your spray texture you can use a piece of cardboard or something just to uh, match the texture that's on your wall and that way you get you know so it blends in and I'm not going to be showing that in this video but um, I'm just showing you how to patch the hole right now because some walls are smooth, some walls are knockdown texture, some are uh, orange peel, um, but most walls uh, in modern houses are orange peel. Yeah, I'll leave a link in the description uh, so you can get that spray texture. And now I'm going to go across the top and push right there, kind of ta taper it in, do it on the bottom, and also down through the middle. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope that was some good information for you and that you can use in the future. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you'll do that and then click the bell icon and then every time I come out with a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks a lot. You have a great day.